Hello, today I wanted to show you some tags that I made. These are mixed media tags. They weren't my idea. Um, I got the idea from Shana from Shanuki Art um, and I'll put the link to Shana, Shana's channel in the box below. However, mine turned out very different to hers and part of that was that I didn't follow her tutorial correctly. So I'd been looking at Shana's pages for mixed media pages and I'd also looked at, at the tutorial for making these tags and I got a bit confused between the two trying to do it from memory and clearly my memory isn't that good and I confused the two techniques and came up with something that was quite interesting so then I went on and did an experiment. So I'll talk about what Shana does but if you want to see it demonstrated you will need to go and see Shana's pages, you need to see her um, uh, mixed media pages and also her tags from old book pages. So to start off with, Shana took a page from an old book. So I've done the same. Mine is approximately five and a half inches by nine and nine inches. And then she folded it in half and then in half again. So that makes you a tag of approximately four and a half inches long and two and three quarter inches wide. Once she'd done that, she unfolded it and with a glue stick, she glued down this side, she folded it in half, she glued the half of what was remaining and folded it back up. And then she trimmed off the corners to make the tag. So that's what I've got here. Now this is where I started to go wrong. Shana's next step was to cover the tag completely in clear gesso. I didn't have any clear gesso um, and I totally forgot that step. So I went ahead and I sewed around my tag. Now this is another thing that Shana didn't do. She did this to, she did sew around her tag, but she waited until the very end. So I went to dive straight in, I sewed around my tag and then I, that's where I got confused again and I inked the tag. And this is what I ended up with. So Shana didn't do this step at all. She just put the clear gesso onto her tag and then she went straight on to the section on um, stenciling. So having done this, and I thought, well, hmm, it doesn't look particularly nice. Um, I think I will put some white gesso over the top. So I put some white gesso over the top and I let that dry. Once it was dry, I then went on and I did the stenciling in the same way that Shana had demonstrated. So what you do is you take a stencil and you lay it across and then you use something like this, this impasto modeling paste. Um, there's many different varieties out there and then use a tool and I used a palette knife but you could use um, an old credit card you could use a piece of stiff cardboard um, maybe a, a plastic gift card that you you've used the credit on it whatever something that will allow you to smooth the the modeling paste over the stencil so you don't need to smooth it over all of it. I just put a little bit on, say, the corner here. Or on, on this one, you can see I just stenciled this part here. If I hold it up a little bit, you can see that I've, I've stenciled this part here and left this part free. Once that has dried, then it's time to start inking. So what Shana does is she goes into the corner of where she started stenciling and she uses a drop of ink and then she sprays the tag with water. So just using a little mister like this and then the ink runs down and it runs into all the grooves. Now this one was a lace um, stencil that I used and this one was that one that I showed you before, the cobblestone one. So you can see here where I put the ink and it started to run down and then there's no ink here. Now this wasn't a mistake in my technique. It was there to start with and then I put it aside to dry and when I came back it had disappeared. 
on Shana's one, it hadn't disappeared. It was the ink was sitting in all the little crevices. And the same thing happened to this one here. The ink actually went into the, the modeling paste. And in fact, there were there was ink all over this, all in all, all the grooves. But as it dried, the ink got sucked into the modeling paste. So I thought, hmm, what have I done wrong? So I went back and I had a look at Shana's video. And lo and behold, that's when I discovered that I hadn't put any clear uh, gesso onto my cards. And I'd ink them before I stenciled. So I thought I'd do a bit of an experiment on that. I took a couple of uh, index cards. This is my index cards. And I thought, well, I'll make this a real experiment. I covered the whole of this one in clear gesso. I've got that written on there. And then the whole of this one, I thought, well, I'll try another. If, if gesso is the sealer, I'll try another sealer. I'll just use plain PVA glue. And that's what I did to this card. Once that had dried, I then put some white gesso across um, my card. So I, I actually only did the top half of each and left the bottom half of each of them without any white gesso at all. And then I divided it into quarters by only stenciling on the left hand side of each of the cards. So essentially I had four quadrants that I could use for the experiment. So we have one here that had clear gesso, uh, plus it had the white um, gesso, um, and this side had, and the stenciling, and this side had just the clear gesso and the white gesso. Down here there was no there was clear gesso, but there was no white gesso, but I did some stenciling. And then on this part, there was just clear gesso. And the same with the PVA one, you had four quadrants uh, along similar lines. So then I dropped the ink into the corners and I sprayed the water on and I moved it around for the ink to run down the, the sides of the two cards. So what happened? Where I had put both the clear gesso and the white gesso, the ink stayed pretty much in the grooves. But then down here, even though I had clear gesso on it, I didn't have any white gesso. And while there has been some um, uptake in the grooves, there's also been a fair bit of uptake into the stones. I mean, there's uptake in the stones here, but at least it left some of the ink where it was. When it moved across onto the side that just had the clear gesso and the white gesso, I got quite a nice bit of mixing um, and the same down here where I just had clear gesso. With the PVA glue, it could have been my technique, but I noticed that there wasn't much ink going into the area where the PVA glue was, even though that top part up there did have white gesso on it. On the side here, um, there's much more uptake of the ink into the modeling paste than when I used clear gesso. Um, and it was fairly evident down here too that there was a lot more uptake into um, the modeling paste um, with PVA glue and no gesso. And there was a bit of mixing down here um, where there was just PVA glue. So uh, I don't, don't wouldn't say that one thing was better than another. It just depends how you want to, um, what the, the effect that you want. If you want the ink to stay in the grooves and you don't want so much taken up into the stenciling part, then you're probably best off clear gessoing and then putting a white gesso over the top. Whether you ink underneath or not, that, that's up to you. Um, if, however, you prefer this look, where the ink has actually gone into the modeling paste itself, then you just go ahead and put white gesso on. You don't put any, um, any clear gesso on at all. Now, in the beginning, I told you I didn't have any clear gesso. I used a homemade clear, clear gesso. So I found a recipe on the internet and I used one part uh, PVA glue, white PVA glue, one part, uh, sorry, four parts PVA glue to one part water and one part baby powder. And it mixes up into a translucent, it's it's not clear, but it's not, not completely opaque white. Um, but when it dries, it does dry clear. Now, the other thing that I did 
was I sewed my tags at the beginning. Now, the reason that I kind of had it in my mind that I needed to sew them in the beginning was that Shani used glue stick. I find that glue stick tends to lift after a while and with the rugged work that I was planning on doing to them, I didn't think it would hold together. Um, we've had a lot of rain in on the east coast of Australia this year and it's really hot and humid and just nothing sticking. So I did sew around mine right at the beginning. However, that did lead me into some issues. As you can see here, it, there's a bit of leakage of the ink through into the back of these uh, tags through the holes that are created by sewing. I did get around that. I white gessoed on the back and that cover, which I intended to do anyway because I wanted to cover the writing so that the tag could be written on itself. Um, but there were one or two that were particularly, where the leakage was particularly bad and um, the white gesso just didn't cover it. If I needed to put a second layer of gesso on, and I'll just see if I've got one of the bad ones here. No, I don't. Um, so um, if I wanted to cover it completely, then I would have had to put a second layer of gesso on and then I'd have lost all of the text that was underneath. So I, in, in that case, what I'm planning to do with that particular card is I will put another layer of um, the old page on the back of it, but I won't use glue stick. I'll use a stronger glue around the edges and then I'll squiggle some down the middle so that it, it's more firmly glued and doesn't come apart. So once I've done all, all of that, I then just went on and decorated mine. Uh, I did put a piece of lace there and then I regretted it afterwards simply because if I'm going to use this card in a pocket, the lace could catch a little bit. Um, this isn't suitable for putting in a pocket with the flower um, sliding into the pocket because you're likely to bend crush and crush the flower in trying to do that if it doesn't get caught on the pocket itself. So it really needs to go in that way around. So what I did here was I just put some coffee dyed muslin on and then I did some die cuts of the same book page, pages from the same book. I used a lighter colour ink, I think it was um, tea ink, tea dye ink on, on the top of them and then I used a darker ink, it was either walnut or I think it might have been espresso that I used on the very edges, just ink the very edges up layered them one set was bigger than the other so they layered nicely and then I just put the pearl in the middle and I did the same thing to this one as well this one I actually consider this one is finished I have got a um, gesso on the back of it I've just put a little bit of ribbon it's not actually ribbon even it's it's knitting nylon and it, the knitting nylon actually makes quite a nice um little decoration on the top there and it stays in place it doesn't undo doesn't slide away like satin ribbon does um, but i think i might just leave this one as it is i rather like the way the pattern that the ink has made so as i said the idea came from shanuki art shana of shanuki art um, links to her channel are in the box below and I suggest that you go and have a look because then you'll see how she actually did each step. She's demonstrated how she did each step. You'll see how hers turned out differently to mine um, and then you might like to take a look at some of her uh, mixed media pages because they truly are fantastic. I tend to go for the more um, vintage style look whereas Shana has a much bolder, brighter look, more modern look. So um, it's a totally different style, um, but do go and check out Shanuki Art.